Sanjay, is the banner uh, clear, clear, straight? It's not inverted, right? Yeah, it is okay. Only Singapore chapter a little bit not visible, but. <laughs> okay, I can see Kala joined in. Shant is there. Few yeah, more will be joining. You are the host, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, hi, Sanjay. Hi, Sanjay. Hi, Kala. Uh, who else is there? Oh, My God, surprise, man. <laughs> you invited us. Hi, Kala. Hi, hi, Nishan. Very surprised hi, to Nishan. see you, man, here. How are you? I'm good, I'm good. How are you all? Uh, good. How is Mehesh? She's also good. Very nice. Nice to see you, man. Nice, nice to see you all. I look forward, look forward to the session. Sure, sure, sure. And Saveri is there. Even Saveri has been answering for a long time. Hello. Hi, Kala. Hey, hi. How are you? I'm good. I was very curious when I saw this. I accidentally opened the group and saw about SPAC, and this was one of the topic I wanted to hear ah. since long. That that that's good. So how yes. is fitness all going? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How is your kid? All good? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everything is good. That's that, that's nice. And uh, hello, Mr. Gurpreet Singh. He's from HDFC, right? Yes, Gurpreet is from HDFC. Hello, yeah, hello, right, sir. Right. Um, hi, hi, hi. Hello, everyone. how are you? Gurpreet. Um, I think there's a bit of the voice. So is it only on my end or? I think so because we just uh, your voice just cut off a little bit um, when you were speaking now okay let, let me let me uh, re-log in just just uh, give me two minutes I, i'll just re-log in i'll let sure. you then sure sure join in okay that's a nice background so you made it is uh, it i tried to make it yes ah. <laughs> Nice, it's nice. Yeah, thank you. Hello, Vidya is there? Wow. Vidya, hi. Oh, she's yeah, joining in, correct. She's hi. on. Hi, hi. Hi, Surprise, to see you. I didn't expect you. I think it's only through Z or Zoom we are meeting each other, I believe. Work. Yeah. I want to learn Nata, yeah, yeah, we, we, we believe that all are busy with the work. Sanjay, Somnath, <laughs> all we are seeing only through Zoom. Oh, hi. Sorry, I didn't realize that I was on mute. Hi, everybody. Hi, Pavan. Hi, Pavan. Okay. Hello, Kala. Hello. Hey. Hello, Rachel. How are you? I'm good. How are things? I'm going, 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 sir. How's the new... Uh, this thing, Somnath. What what thing? Very busy. Hectic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the work it's work alone is busy, and then I think it's fine. Uh, I won't complain because there have been busier days for all of us. And your background is superb, Somnath. Very nice. Yes. Thank you. I'm getting that myself right now. Yeah, then you should swear, give it to me also. Uh, Last time he asked me what I had, but again, that <laughs> did not work on the laptop. But this one is good, Somnat, it's really nice. And uh, Vivek, are you working, Vivek? It's nice to see you here in, the, in our event. Yes, I am. But it was hectic past few months, but uh -huh. now it's a bit light. So uh -huh. I thought I'll join this pack on oh, something nice new to learn. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm outside actually. For a workout, so mm -hmm. perfect timing, double hatting. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thanks for joining, Vivek. Uh, I think it's a long time since we met, also. So nice to yeah, see no. you here. Yeah, looking forward Vivek. to catching up. Hopefully, you, after but again, they have too. We will see. Maybe when they increase it, we will try to catch up again. Yes, look forward to that. Right, right. Vivek. Yeah, sorry. Hey, Vivek, how are you? 
long time I'm not how are you alagappa yeah. we haven't caught up as well long time yeah i know so once we are done with this uh, i don't know when we are going to be done with it you know <laughs> yeah. hopefully june 13th let's hope for it <laughs> may happen may not happen but yeah hopefully. jp someday jp hey hi hi everyone Oh hi! Oh my God, a lot of surprises today. <laughs> yes, uh, driving back home. Yeah. Yeah. Good evening, JP sir. Good evening. Good evening. How are you all? Oh, good, good, and nice to see you. We're nice very to happy to thank see you. you here. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. It's an interesting topic, so I said, uh, you know. Yeah. Must... Sure. Sure. Uh, hi Harini, uh, Harini Narayanan. Hello, hello everyone. Uh, hi Harini, how are you? Good, good. How are you? Good, good, and nice. Thanks because you just joined yesterday and you're attending yeah. the event today. Thanks for your interest. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> I was able to join. <laughs> See all our members here. Yeah. So uh, Harini is our very, very, very new member. Join the chapter. Welcome, Harini, to the chapter and to Thank our, you. your first event. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Very new to Singapore as well. Yeah. All the best. Thank you. Hi, Pratima. I think every all can keep the videos on, you know, so that the speaker also can. Hi, Kala. Good evening, everyone. Hi, hi, hi. <laughs> hi, Pratima. Hi Pratima, good evening. <coughs> You're working from your office, is it? Yes, Pawan. Okay, you so are. Alternate day we are going to office. office. You are required to do that. So I have to collect some documents. So we took the permission. So uh, like that, we are managing that. Oh, okay. So out of all the stuff, I am the only one coming to office now. Take care of the office. I believe there has been queries, uh, including in our company, uh, requiring us to explain as to why do we need to be in office. Yeah, yeah. So and and people have been uh, penalized in case you know uh, the MOM feels that uh, you don't need to be in the office to be you know, working. So we are uh, since past one week, uh, you know, uh, staying at home and working from home. So, mm -hmm. So same with us, only need basis we are coming to office for some documentation part and all this. Mm -hmm. I heard MOM find a few people eleven thousand dollars for yes, yes. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, that even if you declare that you need to be in the office, but if you if you can work from home, yeah. if you can work from home, then what are you doing in the office, right? Yes, uh, true. Uh, they, so they ask not... us to maintain the records. You need to justify why is that that they cannot do at home and come to office. Yeah, and MA is also put the same regulation. See, let's we'll see. One is MOM. You know, the, all the other financial funds they take approval from MAs. So you have the same. Like you need to justify why you need to come office. So it's uh, it's seven p.m. now, um, seven o one now. So maybe the, I can see there are members still joining in, but for the benefit of members who have joined in on time, uh, shall we begin? Yeah. Okay, um, fine. Very good evening, dear members of ICAI Singapore chapter and other dignitaries. Welcome all to our event, all about SPAC. Before we begin the formal session, our sponsors for tonight's event is HDFC Home Loans. Create your space. Mr. Gurpreet from HDFC will share with us a short presentation on their products. Mr. Gurpreet, may I invite you? Yeah. 
Hi, hi, Somnath, and uh, uh, very good evening to all the members here. And it's a pleasure to be uh, on this platform. And uh, we are excited uh, for the uh, you know speaker to hear the speaker as well and to interact with all of you. So uh, I'll just uh, take quick uh, you know six to seven minutes only. I'm not going to hold you guys uh, for too long. So Somnath, can you will you uh, present uh, uh, share the presentation? Yes, give me a minute. So in meanwhile, uh, so I'm joined by my colleague Gurveen, and uh, so she's uh, heading the Singapore branch, and I am uh, uh, heading the Singapore region, which includes the Southeast Asia. So from Singapore, we take care of entire uh, Southeast Asia region for uh, you know uh, helping NRIs uh, with their property purchases in India. So wherever they need uh, you know to have mortgages, uh, home loans, so we we help them advise uh, on those transactions. Can you see my screen? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, so we can uh, go on the second page. So just a quick uh, introduction to HDFC. So HDFC uh, is, is a 44 year old company in India and they pioneered uh, housing finance in India uh, in 1977. And till date they have financed around 8.4 million units uh, in, in the country. And they have a diversified portfolio of home loan products to help uh, the uh, residents as well as non-residents, whoever is looking for buying a property in India. And uh, we have a very well-connected network of uh, you know branches across India which uh, uh, to service the, the clients. So we have around uh, 589 uh, service centers in, in the country. This includes our uh, you know affiliate uh, centers also. So internationally, we have three centers uh, in Singapore, London, and Dubai. And through these centers, as well as our centers in India, we, we service clients across the globe. We can, we can move to the uh, next page. So particularly uh, for NRIs, uh, we, we can fund uh, you know, property purchases for NRIs or OCI card holders or PIO card holders. And across the globe, and for the entire Southeast Asia, we service them from Singapore. So uh, we have been in Singapore uh, for last more than 10 years now, and uh, we can help NRIs get loans for their property purchases across uh, uh, the length and breadth of uh, India. And uh, it includes uh, uh, loans for buying properties, a uh, direct purchase or a resale property, a flat, villa or row houses or residential plots. As well as uh, you know, if somebody wants to renovate the house or extend uh, a house, as well as in case uh, somebody has a loan running with some other financial uh, institute, we can take over those loans also. So recently, we have launched a digital platform. So end-to-end -end journey of uh, you know getting the loan sanctioned is totally digital, wherein the customer just can upload the documents and uh, from his house, and uh, we can uh, throughout uh, uh, get it sanctioned. Uh, without him visiting even once our office. We are also trying to work on a digital process for disbursements, but as on date, because property purchases still involve physical documentation in India. So that process, uh, there's some uh, regulation involved in that. So that second step is still uh, you know, physical. Otherwise, the uh, entire journey has been taken digitally. We can move to the uh, second slide. Okay, so just a quick, uh, uh, you know, update on the prop current property market in India or the mortgage market in India. So currently, the affordability is is is, is at an all-time high. So if we look at uh, last uh, two and a half decades, so the percentage of income to uh, you know the property value was around uh, twenty-two percent. So now it has come down to a factor of three point two, so which uh, makes houses a very uh, you know more affordable. So it's an all-time high affordability, and there are uh, the penetration in India of mortgage uh, mortgages is just ten percent. Currently, if you look at uh, uh, you know uh, 2021, this data is of 2020, so it's around eleven percent, just an increase of one percent because the GDP has dipped uh, uh, you know last year because of certain factors. So there's a lot of push from the government. There are a lot of incentives currently for the for the property sector, and you know, there are favoring favorable demographics around 66 percent of indians are uh, you know still young and there is increased urbanization happening or uh, expected to uh, go from uh, 32 to 50 percent by 2030 
and currently the low interest rate scenario in the country so this all is aiding the uh, it's going to aid the mortgage market which in turn will support the property market in india so there's there's ample scope for the for the real estate market to grow and uh, uh, you know it's it's uh, it's time for nris to uh, still time for nris to invest in the country there's there's, there's, there's uh, the growth story still seems to be intact and uh, we are here in singapore to help you with any of your property purchases any advice so you can approach us we have already shared our contact details with uh, with rajiv and i think it's been circulating them also so please feel free to get in touch with us if there's any requirement thank you thank you thank you gurpreet yeah we have the the details we will share with our members so thank you yeah well, thanks gurpreet thank you thank you rajiv very quick question do you also help in selling and buying properties and renting properties for clients in singapore uh, uh for properties in india or or in singapore india uh no we are currently see if if you have a particular uh, shortlisted properties we can we can help you uh, you know checking the status whether legally it's okay and and location feedbacks we can give but we had an arm which was uh, specializing in this which was uh, hdfc realty but we have recently sold it to quicker i think two years back it was sold off to a quicker but uh, you know we have marketing times they have marketing teams they have ample knowledge about local real estate market so if a particular uh, inquiry has to be made we can assist you with that thank all you. right thank you thank you thank you gurpreet on you behalf will. of the chapter we would like to thank uh, hdfc home loans for sponsoring tonight's event um without further ado let me invite our speaker for tonight's session mr sandeep oberoi mr sandeep is the head of strategic and corporate development at jungle vc he has spent 10 years in advisory and technology companies in fundraising mergers and acquisitions and exits at jungle vc sandeep gets to apply his experience to shape the strategy and performance of its portfolio companies he assists the founders with their strategic initiatives with other tech investors or corporates to help them unlock value and take their companies to the next level prior to jungle vc mr sandeep was an investment banker at bank of america merrill lynch as the head of technology media and telecommunications for southeast asia assisting numerous tech and fintech companies in their capital fundraising and advisory deals prior to banking mr sandeep was in the private practice of the law with a focus on capital markets and mergers and acquisitions mr sandeep holds a bachelor of arts in llb with an honors in law from nls he is an ardent cricketer and golfer in his spare time he loves reading fiction i now invite mr sandeep uberoy to share all about aspac mr sandeep over to you thanks namma um well good evening all um thanks for taking the time i think my conversation here today is around spacs um so i don't know how much detail you all have about spacs but i'll use this session to kind of do a 101 teaching of what a spac is how it works basically why it's replacing or complementary to IPOs today and why particularly is focused on tech companies um i i've sent across a presentation so that could be shared with you guys later on it just gives you generic details but let me just go into where spacs kind of originated and how they kind of originated it's a spacs basically are more an american concept um and and these are basically if you were to look at it spacs are blank check companies now if i were to i i look at myself today as a person who fund raises i may not be an entrepreneur myself but i have access to every entrepreneur i know how to identify deals um so to kind of monetize on on my ability you know people have come out with the concept of a spac 
So the SPAC is basically a special purpose acquisition company that gets set up. You pitch to potential investors that this blank check company will acquire someday a, a very interesting company. Um, you know, maybe in the tech space, maybe in the fintech space. It could. It used to be in the traditional space, which has kind of gone away. So majority of SPACs are now focused on what I call the TMT, tech, media, telco. Again, telco has become something which nobody really wants to touch. Same with media. So you stick to the tech uh, observance of things. Now, um, a SPAC is, why raise a SPAC? Like, like I mentioned, the SPAC gives you the ability for certain companies to list in into the US at a much faster pace and scale. Now, the way a blank check company would be formed, uh, take for example, Somnath today decides that, you know, he has access to hundreds of founders in Southeast Asia uh, and he has access to capital. He's a very well-known name in the market. Now for Somnath, what he would need to do is to set up a company this company, all, all it needs to do is get a bank on board and the bank will go and on the base of, of Somnath's experience, not everyone can set up a SPAC. You need a criteria as to, and the criteria is your own experience, the, the kind of your ability to sell a deal. Now, for instance, in, in my case, if I had to do a SPAC, I've done investment banking. I've, I've been the head at Merrill Lynch for the region. I've raised every dollar for Gojek, for Tokopedia. So pretty much I could go to one of those guys and say, hey, I can de spac you. That gives me that same ability to have a story. Similarly, you know, for hypothetical regions, let's say Somnath has done this for numerous tech companies across Southeast Asia and India. He sets up the shell company. This shell company, he appoints JP Morgan or Morgan Stanley. They go and fundraise for him. Now, usually, the way you, you raise a SPAC according to the market that you want to do the D SPAC. When a, a SPAC is the is basically the is, is the standalone company, the D SPAC is the process of identifying a, a target company to be acquired by the SPAC. Right. So say if in the case of Grab right now, that process is known as a D SPAC. Altimeter did the SPAC and Grab is the entity that's getting D SPAC. Now, in the instance out here, Somnath goes out and says, okay, you know, given the size and scale of companies in India and Southeast Asia, I probably will raise about 200 to $250 million. And that's, in, in these region, this is the ideal size because this is known as the offering size. Now, in this offering size, what would basically happen is Somnath would need to take, uh, put in his own capital risk, what we call risk capital for about seven to $8 million. This seven to $8 million is basically for two key issues. One is to pay your advisors and two is your running cost. Now, your advisors here are your bankers, your lawyers and your accountants, right? So cumulatively, you know, that could cost you about six to $7 million between them. And, and then you need about a million dollars because you would hire, you need to hire, a, if Somnath is the CEO, he needs to have a CFO, he needs to have a board of directors and an advisor in there. So minimum of three people that actually sit on the SPAC, kind of like uh, on the HR tables, if, if you want to speak to it on that way. Now, once you raise this $200 million, the key is one, who is the base of investors coming in? Most of the investors that actually invest in SPACs are the guys are long only funds, more traditionally are hedge funds that kind of invest into it. And the reason today a lot more people, you know, close to a couple of hundred billion dollars have gone into SPACs is the simple fact that when a hot IPO comes out, say a DoorDash or, or a Grab or a Gojek tomorrow, you're you know, the IPO size could be a billion dollars, but the demand is, you know, close to, let's say about $25 billion. So your allocation there is very little. So you don't really get a pop. So if someone, if you, for instance, you wanted, you placed an order for a hundred dollars, but you ended up getting $1. Now your best bet is in this pack, you may take, you may put in that hundred dollars, you will get allocation for a hundred dollars. You're, you're basically banking on, you know, uh, taking it again, like Somnath himself on his ability to go and source a great deal 
and to have a great outcome from that perspective. So that's the ability to look. Now, Somnath in this instance has two years to go and find a company and despack it. If he doesn't do it within a period of two years, he has to return all the principal that he raised. And plus that $7 million or $8 million, which was the fee that was to set it up, he loses all of that money. So that's why you kind of traditionally see when a SPAC life is coming to the last six months, they go crazy on, on finding a deal because no one wants to be in the position to lose money. Now, what's the benefit for Somnath to set up this SPAC? So when Somnath sets up this SPAC, he gets 20% of the stake. So, so say this company was $200 million. He is sitting immediately on $50 million of, of the SPAC is what is owned by him. Now, this pack out of the $50 million, he probably will give his advisors, you know, he may have a board of advisors, he may have ex his CFO, he may give them a couple of stakes. That's why SPACs for individuals are very, very lucrative businesses. It, it's a massive multiplier effect, right? And the 20% is without the warrants. You also have the ability to price in warrants where if the share price, for instance, every SPAC, the share is priced at $10. Um, and, and the reason it's priced at $10, it just makes it easy to kind of manage on a cap table on the initial outset. And that's how the SEC set up the rules. Um, so for instance, you could have a warrant structure. This warrant structure would come into play where, again, Somnath may have 20, 30 warrants, uh, you know, or, and these warrants were, to be triggered at certain valuation. So if say he goes to get Gojek and he does the IPO at 20 billion, if the IPO, if the price of the company goes up to 25 billion, he would get an additional say 25 million of shares. Uh, and, and then another, you know, if it goes to 30 billion, he gets another 25 million, right? That's how the war warrant structure is built in. So most people, you know, when you price a deal in a SPAC, you don't want to really price it at the highest end of the valuation curve. You want to leave a bit of pop out there so that the warrants come into play. The warrant works for not only the founders, but also for the investors in there. In certain cases, some investors would get warrants in these companies. Um, so that's how the structure would basically work of a SPAC. Maybe I'll pause here for a second if there are any kind of like questions or then I can go into the process for how, how to kind of lease back. Yeah, maybe Sandeep, uh, maybe we finish and then we can invite our members for questions at the end. Okay, sure. Um, and then moving along, right? So now that the SPAC has been set up and let's call it XPAC. So XPAC is now listed on the NASDAQ. It, it trades at a $10 basis. There may be a premium that it's trading at or it may trade underwater if it's below 10. Now the process is where, you know, Somnath and team would go out there to identify assets. Now, when you identify an asset, you have to really see whether the company one is, and it's just like any other company, whether it's IPO ready, it's, so your IPO governance and everything else does not change substantially or in, or in any way. You're exactly on paripasu as a company that would do an IPO. The only difference is instead of going and doing a full roadshow and doing uh, a whole, you know, pitch by yourself, like in the case of Grab or, or someone else, you're like, okay, there's an existing vehicle here. All I need to do is one is to inform, let me go and pitch to the existing shareholders and tell them, hey, we're, this is the deal we're doing. This is the approval. You, you need an approval of 50% from your shareholders, which in 99.9% .9 of the times they will, because they believe in the founder, they would, uh, who, who set up the SPAC, they would just go pretty much blindfolded without opposing. I, I have not come across an instance yet to see where a SPAC has been you know, unwound because of no one liked the deal or the pricing wasn't right. Um, so that is scenario number one. Scenario number two is in once you identify this deal, now say in the instance of Grab, the deal size was about three and a half billion. There is a concept of what is known as a private placement, which we call a pipe. Now, a pipe has to be built. The way a pipe is built is you would have now multiple banks on board, and they would take, you know, grab as well as altimeter in that case. 
they would take them to large investors who would place orders and would set the valuation. Now, the valuation initially was given as a guidance where Altimeter said, you know, we do think Grab could be worth anywhere between, you know, 30 billion to 35 billion as an example, right? And on, on Grab's balance sheet, they had $4 billion cash. They raised another $4 billion. So if you actually look at the deal right now, Effectively, it comes to about $39 billion, but the EV value of the company is $30 billion. That's what investors are paying for because you're, you're taking off the cash component on the company, right? So this is how the price determination is done by the big boy investors, the so-called long onlys of the world, the Tamasics, the GIC, the MSIMs, BlackRock Fidelities of the world who understand how to price these deals will get a pricing done. So you build a pipe based on the interest. The pipe could vary from anywhere like from a $50, billion, $50 million pipe to all the way to like $4 billion in the case of Grab, all right? Um, so that's how the process would happen. Now, once you, you've built your pipe, everyone is bound by their agreement to to put in X amount at the point of time when the company would trade. And now roughly what happens from then to now is an M&A process. It's not really an IPO process because the shares of the SPAC are actually getting other ones that are doing a reverse onto Grab. So Grab's shares are swapped over into, into a SPAC and, and then grab shares get listed. So the company won't be trading as Altimeter anymore. The name will shift, will shift to grab because the grab sh swap has happened. Now the existing investors of grab will get locked in probably the, the largest 10% the largest or the largest 15%. And the re reason why they get locked in is so that you don't have immense of selling on the first day and there's a lot of then pricing pressure. You wanna keep the limited float of ability to sell which keeps the price high on in terms of a gra uh, in, in terms of a market perspective. So that's basically market book building. There is no requirement by the SEC to lock up the large shareholders, but there is uh, the SEC will lock up the shareholders, uh, the founders, and the large management teams within Grab. And also in this case, for example, if Somnath was the sponsor of the SPAC, he would get locked up for X period of time. Um, and then once you start trading, you know, basically it's pretty much the same. People would write research on it. Um, so that's the whole essence of how uh, a SPAC works. It just basically, from a process perspective, it reduces your time from an IPO where it used to be like six to say six months or so to roughly about three months. That's the only differential. And the availability of capital is key because you're you're not going to sell the company or, or waste time trying to go and meet a hundred investors. You unless you're building a, a pipe because you already know that the money is available on the table. So one second, I'm just uh, logging in, but I can't log in as Anushka. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's my right name. This is now half the time I'm sure. I here. think you need. No, no, no problem. Need to peel off. Uh, okay, sorry about that, Sandy. Please continue. Yeah, no, no worries. So basically, this is what's done. Now, if you look at it last year, close to about 80 plus billion was raised in SPACs, which was the highest ever on record. Um, uh, in 20, if you if you look at the history of SPACs, why there's so much interest in SPACs, again, because the amount of tech companies coming out, people not getting enough allocation, um, a lot of very interesting high profile names, the likes of Peter Thiel, um, for example, who's the founder of PayPal, set up his own SPAC where he's looking at targets in Indonesia and Southeast Asia and India. Um, you know, you you name the who's who of the world is probably has set up a SPAC today. Um, but then now, what's happening is there are way too many SPACs out there. Everyone chasing the yeah. top few companies. Yes, um, On the spot, thirty seconds. Members, members yeah, are yeah. Yeah. Members, can you just put up on mute? Please keep on mute. Sorry about that, Sandeep. Please continue. No, no worries. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So if you look at the trajectory of you know traditional IPOs versus bank companies, this is the first time SPACs have beaten traditional IPOs. 
Um, again, now you look at 2021, I would say there's going to be a drastic fall in the number of SPACs happening. And the reason is there's so many SPACs that have raised substantial amount of money that haven't been able to de-SPAC yet. So it's going to be a fair bit of time that people would go out to find SPACs out there. Uh, but that being said, look, Southeast Asia, India, countries like these where traditionally it was harder to do IPOs today with the SPACs available, it's getting a lot more interesting. There's a lot more liquidity that will come into the market, a lot more focus. Um, so it's very interesting times. Uh, also, you know, it's comparable and hopeful that, you know, the SPAC, uh, SPACs trade well is really important for that and that they're pricing the deals well, because if they don't price well, you're again going to be in a very precarious kind of situation where, you know, then the SPAC market could close down for a very long period of time. Um, I'll kind of pause here because I've, I've finished through the presentation, but happy to address any questions that people may have. Okay, maybe uh, yeah. If you if you have questions, you can just you know come in and unmute yourself and say your question. Sandeep, hi, this Rakesh. Yeah, hi, Sakhi. So, Sandeep, you mentioned that every SPAC has a face value of $10, right? And if as an investor, I am looking at investing into a SPAC, which has not identified the company to do SPAC with, my risk, you said the amount will get returned to me after two years, right? So, can I say that uh, my risk is limited, that the amount will always come back to me and uh, the amount will not fall after $10 or, be, or below $10? Not really. If the amount falls below 10, like say at the end of the SPAC life, it's trading at seven, you would only get paid back seven. Now, if you had warrants, which is unlikely as a retail investor, you would have. The guys who get warrants are all the big boy investors who put in the first bet on, on the IPOs, uh, sorry, on the SPAC. So they would have warrants which would protect them up to about 9.8 out of $10. So they may lose 20 cents in total, right? But retail investors don't have that ability. So when you're kind of picking a SPAC, you really want to see where it's trading at because say Bridgetown, for example, um, which is the Peter Thiel SPAC has traded from all the way from $10 up to about $17. Today, I think it may be at 12 or 13. I'm not too sure. Um, so, and, there, and they didn't even identify a company. So there was, a, there was an in, in, inherent pop for no reason on that. Um, so a lot of it is also, you know, people just playing an arbitrage on this. But Sandeep, have you seen in your uh, experience Many SPACs uh, who has not been able to identify a company to de-SPAC actually going beyond 10 or these are exceptional cases? No, uh, look, a lot of the high profile SPACs tend to trade higher. The reason is if you're a, a very prominent name, your ability to find a good deal is much higher than someone else, right? If you take a Westbridge, for example, which is a very big name or a Ribbit, um, their ability to find deals is much higher than anyone else. So that's how you, it's, it's also like you placing a bet on Google versus a, a really small company, right? You feel a bit more comfortable on, on that person's ability. So that's how you kind of have to think about, think about it. So can I ask a quick question to Vivek here? Let me, yep. Yeah. So the question I have is uh, in terms of valuation, uh, if we do a traditional IPO versus a SPAC, would the valuation be any different? Um, That's one. Second question, so far all the SPACs have been in the technology EV solar space. Is there room for say Asian consumer non-tech businesses? Uh, Thank look, you. That's a good question. I would say, look, the, the part of it always subject to on valuation comes down to you know, getting it right for investors. And, you know, the sponsor wants to get it right for himself because there's a lot left on the table for them. So if you look at the instance on valuation versus a traditional, both of them in a way are book building process. So unless there is no pipe being done, you should always pick a company if you're investing that there is a pipe available because the pipe kind of determines a new pricing. So in the case of Grab, when they did a 
pipe when they went and got the additional three and a half billion, that was a, a validation of the valuation discovery. So that is one process. Now, to your point, a SPAC can actually do any deal. They could actually even buy, you know, a, a consumer company. But investors today are not really interested in those kind of like asset classes. You could put a shipping company for, 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 for all, 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 you know, purposes. But the key is it's, it has to be sectors that are attractive and are interesting. There is no limitation on a sector basis that whether they can SPAC or not. So All right. So, uh, so just sorry, to Gary. summarize, that means evaluation is not necessarily different, need not be different, and there's not much of an appetite for Asian non-tech consumer, right? Yeah, if I cool. got it right. Yep. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Uh, hi, Sandeep. This is Pavan Pri. Uh, you know, uh, when when you do normally an IPO, there's a huge amount of uh, you know RHP requirements and in terms of the business and all that uh, from a regulator to look at uh, uh, before the money can be raised from the public. So in a SPAC, you know, because there's absolutely nothing which is available at the you know to begin with. Would it be only the management who's basically behind it for the stuff that you're talking about? Is that the case? You know, how does how does the regulator get comfort of the you know money being raised around and people will not just shut the shop and run off? Yeah, so Pawan, look in both cases, um, you always have documentation. So the SEC doesn't allow you to not do documentation. So you have, in the first case, you know the SPAC would have their own documentation as to why they're doing the SPAC, what kind of I companies they're going to identify. It's 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 like a general IM, but it's a lot more succinct, if I could use the word, compared to a whole RHP or a DRHP or, or whatever. Look, the, the process in India is extremely onerous. A SPAC is a very US concept, so I'm going to compare it to a Apple to Apple in the US. Now, in the US, uh, an S1 or an F1 filing is, is very factual based. It's about you know, one tenth the size that you would get in, in what you would do in India or in Singapore or, or any other region, right? And then when you're despacking, you have to submit a similar document. Basically, in this case, say, in, like if you go into onto the SEC website and you type altimeter, you will find the grab document. You will ex, you will see exactly grab doing all the disclosures, giving you their financial disclosure, just like they were doing a normal IPO. But the 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 basis of it is it's a lot more compressed vis-a-vis -vis a full-blown because a lot of the you know the process of how the SPAC is going to be done or everything else all those documents were filed at an earlier stage and and investors and retail investors are very familiar with the process so it's it's not a case that you don't file anything it's there is absolutely almost all information available just like you were doing an IPO thank you hey Sandeep this is Sandeep on the other side as well. Uh, Follow-up question uh, to what Pavanthi had asked. Um, do you see regulators catching up on this game and probably, uh, you know, going forward, it will be very difficult for companies to find exit via SPAC. Maybe not now, uh, probably 12 months, 24 months down the line. Not really, because it's it's been a regulated product from the SEC for a very long time. But what the SEC is clamping down now on is the warrant structure, because the warrants basically are coming into play um, quite significantly, and they have a, a massive arbitrage, right? It could really add up to a lot of money, and this money is very easy money, and so people could price a deal in such a way that could manipulate the markets. So you would carry on seeing SPACs for a very long period of time, but you'd kind of see warrants getting more disclosed because warrants earlier were being treated as equity. They're now being asked to be treated as debt for the SPACs. So you're seeing multiple ways that the SEC is clamping down around the warrant structure. And is it debt even if it's uh, convertible into equity at whatever, $17, $18? Yeah, it, it is. That's how the SEC is treating it. So it's not something that I'm very familiar with around the process. This is just a paper that recently has come out. And again, you guys are accountants. You'll be you'll, you'd have better knowledge around that than I would. And um, so that's something maybe you guys can can look at it and, and see how the SEC is thinking about. All right. 
Sandeep, this is Ramesh here. What was the cost attached to it in uh, raising the funding for the, you know, the, the, the prospective companies, number one. Number two, any, any tax liability is there upon uh, this packing time? Yeah, so on, on the first one, like like I mentioned, if I'm setting up a SPAC, I have to pay the banker. So the bank fee is usually for a whole SPAC process is 2% for the SPAC and 3% for the DSPAC, right? Mm -hmm. So the 2%, so say you raise $200 million, you're paying them 2% of that. That is your cost. You need two set of lawyers. One is the issuer lawyer, one is the underwriter lawyer. You need your accountants on board and then you need, you know, maybe your filings and all of that kind of stuff so mm -hmm. that adds up to like seven eight bucks right yeah so that's one cost and um and to your I, can you repeat your second question please the, the, the tax liability uh so the tax liability portion it depends on jurisdiction to jurisdiction now say in indonesia if i were to do a direct spac without listing in indonesia i'd be hit with a five percent withholding tax but if i do a dual listing where i list uh my company on, on the uh, IDK as well as do a SPAC, then my liability is like 0.5. In Vietnam today, there are structures that make it very hard to do a SPAC. So you can't do a SPAC there. In India, the, um, the SEBI has come out with new regulations where there will be very minimal tax, uh, tax leakage. So they're, they're helping tech companies to kind of go and list more. So it just depends on jurisdiction to jurisdiction. Sure. I think the other cost is the 20% freebie that the sponsor gets, right? Yeah. And third is the cost of the warrants. So if your warrant goes above 1150, then that's a huge cost as well. So if you add all that up, it may end up at being almost 8, 10% of your SPAC uh, funds, right? Well, you're, you're paying for the entry cost that you're getting into the deal. So that's why it's basically, you know, when there's so much liquidity in the market, people really don't really care because they're hoping they get a, a massive pop on the first day. Um, and and you're, you're taking the risk. Well, I personally agree that 20% is, 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 is very expensive to pay to someone setting it up, but that's kind of the norm and what the market standards are. Which you don't incur if you're doing an IPO. So compared to IPO it would be much cheaper. Not really from that instance, because then again, the liquidity float won't be that much because this person is locked up for like three years. It's not like they can sell down on day one or, or take away. And, and it's only that component of the SPAC race that, that's, that's underlying, which is left with them. Yeah, it's an expensive uh, uh, lockup lock up period, right? Yep. Sandy, I have a few questions from members who have posted on the chat box. Um, how does the domicile of a, a SPAC determined? I'm just, I don't get the question. So uh, let's, let's say the SPAC is listed in US, but the target okay, company is not so in US. Majority, yeah, so majority people just do it in BBI or came in because of, you know, it's neutral tax regulations. That's, that's pretty much it. I haven't seen you know, any other jurisdictions where SPACs have been set up. Okay, uh, second one, can the SPAC be used for IPOs? I think it's it's answered in this person. Okay, yeah. uh, the second question is, um, how is SPAC different from a special purpose vehicle made by PEs to invest? No, so a SPAC again is, uh, uh, SPV is just a blank check, which you don't go and list because there's no money raised on it, that you inject money into an SPV and it's 100% owned by the private equity or vehicle or anything else, right? A SPAC is a kind of like a listed entity by itself. So it's it's a very different, two very different kind of beasts out there. Correct, okay. And uh, does the SPAC limit its investment to one or it can invest in multiple investments? No, so you look. You can do. Uh, you can't do multiple investments. You have to do one. But what you can do is, you can, you can like how Gojek and Tokopedia merged, and now you list GoTo as one entity in the SPAC. You can't go and you couldn't have the SPAC couldn't have done Gojek one side and Tokopedia one side, and then try to build a performer on it because the performer of the company, the SPAC already has to be with the existing company, with one company, not with multiple companies. So any consolidation you do pre 
coming in, getting these back. Okay. Um, thanks, Sandeep. Um, members, I think uh, we do not have more questions. On, on oh, I have, sorry, so, so, sorry, Somna, just a second. Okay, Pawan. So, uh, uh, Sandeep, just to uh, understand more, uh, is uh, the SPAC company required to put the money, you, you mentioned about two years period. So are they required to put that money into a specific bank account, not to use yes, the amount? So it's, it's your underwriter who will put it into an escrow account, which you And the entire amount, or they are only limited the to spend amount. the entire yeah. amount? Yeah. Okay, and, and, and normally, it's, it's uh, a nominal amount would be required to be spent out for expenses or whatsoever, and that's all about it, is it? That, that the sponsor has to put separately into a different oh, account. Oh, okay, all right, okay. all right, okay. thank you. Wait, can I ask a quick question? Uh, how does the process work? First, there is obviously the IPO, by the sponsor, then he finds a target. Uh, the, tar the target company, the sponsor says, "Okay, I'm willing to do a deal." Then, when do you announce? Do you announce after the pipe is secured, or do you first announce and then go looking for this pipe? No. So you uh, you basically do it on. There's something called an EGC rule, which allows you to go and do a confidential filing. So the way it would be done is once the sponsor finds a deal say the deal is grab, um, they do a confidential filing with the SEC and then they do something called testing the waters. Testing the waters is basically going to investors to build your pipe. You build your pipe, you know you have demand, then you announce the deal. You never announce the deal before the pipe. All right, thanks. Yeah. Okay. So and how do you explain uh, grab, you know, the ultimator, the, after the deal was announced, the share price fallen from 15 to 11. Yeah, so and they, even other SPACs, they've gone from 19, like VGAC, 19 to 10 or below 10. So, is this a negative press or what no, is it's it too expensive? It's negative because people knew the grab deal was coming. People wanted to, to buy in. So, you know, when Altimeter got leaked on Google, people I mean, on Bloomberg, people started buying into the SPAC. Now you know the valuation is at 40 billion, you may think it's really expensive. And if the share price is trading at 15, then you know that it's a $60 billion company. Is that very expensive? So, and that's why then people start selling down. Now, if I bought the deal at 10 bucks, at 11 bucks, when, when it's at 15 at that point of time, I'm like, sell it because I know the, the share price is going to be 10. So, you know, the pop sure. probably is going to be like even 25% on the first day is 12.5. This you're basically saying is a 15, 15, $15 pop. I mean, sorry, 50% pop um, on the first day. So that's how you have to look at SPAC. Look, SPAC trading is very retail driven, right? On, on when it's listed. So it's just retail trying to play arbitrage. A lot of guys just don't know how to price. It's kind of like a GameStop situation, right? You, you yep. keep buying GameStop without really thinking about the fundamentals of it. You just want to make a quick buck. So um, unless you really have some conviction, you know, you, you want to be cautious about investing in SPACs till they de-SPAC. Yeah. Um, members, I think we will have to um, let Sandeep go in a few minutes. Any last question from any members? Yeah, so just, just one question. So basically when you do buy, so, so that is typically from a large investors or you typically go to the public also? It's like a public issue. You mean the pipe? Yeah. The pipe is only it's only accredited institutional investors, so you never. So, so basically, to... so when 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 it is reverse merge, so in a sense, there are no new public shareholders. The new public shareholders will only come after it is listed. Not really. That you could be a new public shareholder because you could be trading on the spac right now, right? On the spac itself. Okay. okay. Yeah, but you can't. You won't be in the pipe. Okay. 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 Thank you to all the members who have asked questions and who have posted their questions on the chat box. If you have any other question for SPAC, you can uh, message us on the WhatsApp group and we will touch base with Sandeep. Sandeep has a hard deadline, so um, we'll let him go first. Thank you, Sandeep. I think it was a really informative session on such a niche topic. Uh, and thank you for that. No wonder um, SPAC is gaining so much of popularity in the West more and maybe it will come soon to the East. Um, and thank you for sharing your own experiences and interesting facts about the SPAC and the entire ecosystem. Thank you. Um, Thanks guys, have a good day, bye. Thank you Sandeep, bye. Thank you. May I now invite-
uh, members, we are not done yet. So because Sandeep had, uh, we had promised Sandeep that we will let him go by 7.40, so he's off. Uh, may I now invite Sanjay Singh Panwar, our chair, vice chairman, for the word of thanks, please. Uh, thank you, Somna. So even though Sandeep is not there, but officially we have to give him the vote of thanks, so it will be placed on record. So thank you, Mr. Sandeep Oberai, for an enlightening and entertaining presentation on SPSE, its related matters, recent trade, and how this is going to be a game changer for many industries, specifically for the tech and the fintech industries. As you informed that SPSE is almost a decade old concept, but recently becoming more prevalent because of this extreme market volatility, which is caused by many other factor and also for the global pandemics. Now, as you mentioned that SPSC has its own merits and demerits, which needs to be carefully analysis and detailed study before investing in such companies. And you had extensively covered some of its aspects during the very interesting Q&A session also. So please accept our sincere appreciation for the outstanding presentation you made to the ICI Singapore chapter member. It is very interesting to hear about your experience and knowledge in SPSC field. Your examples and the statistics about the SPSC companies were very interesting. The slide you presented gave us a close look at the process, concept, and the nitty gritty of the topics in a very simplified manner. So thank you so much for sharing your time and experience with us. We would also like to thank all our members for their continuous support and contribution for joining this session. Thank you very much. Over to you, Somnath. Thank you, Sanjay. I also take this opportunity to thank once again to our sponsors for tonight's event, HDFC Home Loans. We have come to the end of this um, session. We will see all you, you all in our next session. Until then, stay safe and good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Well done, Somnath. Thank you, guys. Yes, thank you. Take care.